What's going on guys? In this video we're going to be discussing Itertools Compress and we're also going to be discussing some limitations with Itertools Compress, um, some variants in terms of how you can solve the same problem in different ways and some of the benefits. So basically we're going to just not just look at what it does, we're going to take a look at how it can be useful and what are the limitations of Itertools Compress. So recently I've been exploring editor tools, so I'm trying to see what else you can do with Python. And this is one of the first of probably many videos regarding editor tools. All right, so I've created a very contrived example, which consists of uh, two lists. So we have fruits, which consists of four elements, and selections, which contains four elements as well. Now selections is limited to true and falses, and fruits is limited to fruits. And what iter tools are compressed does is wherever there's a true in the second list, which is selections, we're going to get the index of the true value and match it with the index of the fruits list. And wherever they match, we're going to extract that value. So basically, we're using selections as a mask to pull out the elements in the fruits list. So the true is going to pull out guava and the true here is going to put out strawberries because it's the first and last element of the list. So if we run this, um, oops, I forgot to run iter tools, and now we'll run this. So we get back a result object. Now this is an iterator, so to get the real results, we need to run a list on it. And just so you guys can see, results. It's an iterTools.compress iterator or object. And now we'll run a list on it to get back the two values, uh, guava, which, mass, which matches with the true, and strawberries, which matches with the true. All right, so while this is great, um, the only problem is that if you have, say, thousands of items, do you need to create a selections list with true and falses? What if you just had the indices of where you want to extract uh, certain elements. So say you had like a thousand elements and you had 0, 33, 88, 90 and you wanted to extract those elements only. Now with slicing, with list slicing, it's problematic to do one element at a time. So you can only pretty much get ranges and if you wanted to get something like the first element and the third element, what you would need to do is uh, something like this. First and third element, so guava and grapes. So you do something like this, but this is a little tedious if you want to get multiple items. There is really no good way of extracting values based off their indices in pure Python. So that's why I'm assuming uh, editor tools are compressed was created. But as you can see, if you don't have the selections list, which is full of Boolean values, then it's kind of annoying to create a whole list of true false. So I try to think of a way or think of what's the best way to actually create the selections list if you have indices. Because if you have indices, you would need to somehow create the selections list and then use that with uh, iter tools that compress. So one way I went about it is first I created a fruits list, which consists of 100 of these mini lists to create a, a big data set. So our fruits is now 400 elements. Um, we can check the first 10. I don't want to check the first 50, but oops. Code. So as you can see, it's a repeating list. Now the first thing we can do is to create a, a selections list for this fruits uh, object list. We can create a se selections list with all falses for i in the range of len of fruits. So basically, we're going to get a list of 400 falses. So if I run this, run this, you'll see uh, the first 10 elements are all falses, and we have a selections list with 400 elements. So after that, if we have the indices, say we want to extract the 0, 33rd, and 40th index from fruits, what we can do is we can iterate through indices, which is 0, 33, 40, and then we can use indexing with selections to set that value to true. Selection 0, selection 33, and selection 40 will equal true. And if we run that, you'll see the 0th element. Um, then there's 33 and then 40. So with a few tricks, we created a Boolean list called selections. Now we can run 
a results equals iter tools compress fruits selections and we'll get the 0 33rd and 40th element now if we run the run list we get guava tangerine guava now while this is one way to make compress useful there's actually a much better way we can just use numpy uh, numpy allows for uh, using a list or an array for indexing so if we import numpy as mp we can just create the original fruits list into an array we'll call it mp fruits now you can use these indices to fit them right into the numpy indexing or a slicing system so here when you try to index or slice uh, mp fruits you can feed it a list or an array as opposed to the normal or the vanilla python implementation or the vanilla python list you couldn't feed it a list for indexing or slicing so if i run this now uh, result um, oops and if we print result you'll see that we get back the same elements um, as we did here. So this is just a much easier way if you have the indices that you want to use to slice uh, MP fruits. All right, so we're not just limited to numbers, we could also use uh, trues and falses. In this case, you have to make sure, of course, that the trues and false match the uh, size of uh, MP fruits because we're indexing. So what we can do is we can just check len of selections. Uh, all right. 400 now we're going to run this with selections as well so just in case you actually have uh, a list or an array with uh, trues and falses you know you can use numpy with that list as well so numpy is flexible in that sense that you can use uh, indices uh, a list of indices or you can have a list of boolean values for boolean indexing and if you run this you'll see we get uh, guava tangerine guava which is what we got earlier and you can just turn it into a list all right. All right, hopefully that made sense. I'm a little tired because it's uh, very early in the morning, but uh, hopefully I didn't make any uh, silly mistakes, but it looks good. And hopefully this was uh, useful to you guys as well. All right, I'll see you guys next time.